We're about to have the uh, the hearings on the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. One of the individuals who's going to testify first on July 27th is Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn, who back in April told Joy Reid in an interview that black officers fought a different battle than everybody else as they endured both physical trauma and racist slurs while fending off supporters of former President Donald Trump who were attacking the Capitol. So. Um, I believe he's one of the officers that was captured in a lot of video, an incredibly traumatic experience, I'm sure, surrounded by Trump supporters who wanted to murder you while chanting about how they back the blue or whatever. And so he is going to be testifying, and I imagine he's not going to say things that Trump supporters are going to like. So, uh, like almost two weeks in advance of, I guess, a week and a half in advance of him testifying, the campaign to discredit him has begun. And so last night, Tucker Carlson launched a preemptive attack against this Capitol Police officer, and here it is. So the committee will proceed with one party. What will it look like? We'll think MSNBC with subpoena power. On Tuesday, Pelosi will call a Capitol Police officer called Harry Dunn. Dunn will pretend to speak for the country's law enforcement community. But it turns out Dunn has very little in common with your average cop. Dunn is an angry left-wing political activist whose social media feeds are full of praise, not coincidentally, for Nancy Pelosi. Here's a picture of the two of them together. Racism is so American, Harry Dunn wrote a one post, that when you protest it, people think you're protesting America. Hashtag leave it to whites to tell blacks what is racist. Hashtag I stand with Elon Omar. Hashtag squad. Harry Dunn, ladies and gentlemen, just another fact based witness to the insurrection. Okay, so um, he doesn't speak for the, the police officers because He's a leftist or whatever. First of all, he, he he's not on the left. I, I don't know his politics, but I will say that simply because you have a photo of him with Nancy Pelosi does not imply that he's a communist or whatever. I'll just put that right out there. But um, Ben, why would if he like cares about racism and believes that it's a part of American politics, why exactly would that mean that he is less representative of law enforcement? I mean, he did fight the mob at the Capitol. I mean, now let's follow that that argument to the logical conclusion, right? That means that if this man who is fighting against, um, standing up against the fact that there was white supremacy marching up the steps of the Capitol, uh, put his life on the line. The reason he's in the picture with Nancy Pelosi is because he's a Capitol Police officer. You would think that the United States Capitol Police officer would be familiar with the Speaker of the House, right? <laughs> True. But you know, that's not <laughs> sufficient enough for you to get the boogeyman of what. Tucker Carlson actually wanted to say, you know, he wanted to say a big black scary man. This man's six foot seven, I think, six foot five, six foot seven. He really mm-hmm. wants to make you afraid of him in this, but he can't get away with it by getting, you know, doing the dog whistles. But he could do it by making a, you know, drawing an analog between leftists and 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 the, the difference between the Republicans, or rather, difference between the police officers. The difference is is that this man actually fought for America, while those other cops were out there fighting against America on January sixth. That's the difference, Tucker. Yeah, definitely. He he's by the way, he served in law enforcement for thirteen years, and and could have been killed on that day, January sixth. None of, but but again, the reason I point this out is like, it's 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 bad enough. They pretend like that they they you know back the military, they back the cops or whatever. It's like sort of fundamental element of fascist ideology. But like at least do it then. They don't even mm. really do it. <laughs> they they do for the symbols or whatever. And sure, if you know, if a cop is killing an unarmed black man, they love that. But like it takes virtually nothing for them to not care about you anymore. Like if you are a member of the military that like you know reveals a war crime or something, they are done with you. No matter how many yeah. battles you participated in, if you're a black cop who like doesn't want to strangle Nancy Pelosi on sight, screw you and your years of service. That doesn't count for anything. If you're you know John McCain and your plane crash, they can mock you openly. It doesn't matter. If you're a Gold Star family, they can spit in your face. Nothing buys any actual respect. It's all symbols to these people. And so, he, and again, he's never gonna be specific. He's never gonna specifically try to make some sort of philosophical case for why if you're a cop and you tweet something that seems democratic-ish, that means you're not a cop anymore. Because he would never say that if you're a cop and you say something that's right wingish, that that means that you don't count. Or that your service doesn't merit any respect. They would never actually try to make that case. They just speak a little bit around the edges. 
and give you reason to say, yeah, F that cop, he doesn't count. Mm. So that's what they're doing, and you're and you're gonna see a lot more of that as these uh, hearings proceed. John, you'll notice in this in that clip, uh, you reminded me of something I noticed in that clip where he quotes uh, Harry Dunn and he reads the tweet, but then he adds on an entire section of hashtags that are literally not in the tweet. Hashtag, yeah, I don't know what that's about. That's because the tweet itself is no longer sufficient to scare white people. White people understand that racism is so America that when you protest it, people think you're protesting America. That's not enough because white people are getting that through critical race theory. What's terrifying mm-hmm. is when you say hashtag Ilhan Omar. That's nowhere in the tweet. And I challenge Tucker Carlson to say if that was actually in the tweet, then show the receipts, put it on the screen. It wasn't because he's doing his dog whistle propaganda job, which is to make sure that you contextualize black people to be someone to be feared by Fox News, white aggrieved conservatives. Exactly, yeah. Imagine being terrified of Ilhan Omar. Is there like someone who seems more delightful? I've never met her, but is there anyone who seems more delightful than Ilhan Omar? I don't know. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.